This game is T and is not suitable for kids. Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, Marty! And guess. Welcome back, everybody, to the game where Marty doesn't talk. At least, yeah. not until we encounter some female characters. We're continuing Miles Edgeworth Ace Attorney Investigations today. Still on the beginning of Turnabout Visitor. We just met gym teacher gym. Jacques. <laughs> yeah. You are an embarrassment to the prosecutor's office. <laughs> Let's leave. Actually, I think... We can leave. Mr. Portsman, a word if I may. Jim, I swear I'll find your killer and bring them to justice. Yeah, what's getting at him? You wait and see. It'll be for the both of us. Now then, uh, you wanted to talk to me about something? Um, no, that's all right. I feel like I'm interrupting their conversation. Let's see. Do I have any other logic? Killer's goal. Signs of a struggle. Hmm. Perhaps. I will say, no. I feel like in real life you are a lot like Edward. Hey, I agree. Oh, hey, let me check this out now. <laughs> ah, your jacket, sir! What's it doing on the floor? It must have fallen off the wall when the killer tried to threaten me by firing around. So the killer not only shot the victim, but they shot your jacket as well? They dared to shoot the ultra-special jacket that you made for your, prosecur your prosecutorial debut in? <laughs> what if they had shot through it? It would have been a disaster! It's not worth getting worked up over, Detective. Not when there's something more here. Huh? Like what? I take it you haven't noticed it yet, Detective? There is a giant contradiction right in front of us. Really? Did I say contradiction? He must be rubbing off on me. I'm starting to sound like him. <laughs> but I have my own methods, and I will conduct this investigation my way. When the scene before me contradicts a piece of evidence or seems off that last line, <laughs> it's like that. You'll do it my way. basically. <laughs> That's when my deductive skills come into play. First, I have to find the spot that holds the contradiction. This is it. The bullet hole is where the contradiction lies. When I spot something that's off, I should touch the deduce button with conviction. But only with conviction. And when I have found sufficient proof to prove the contradiction, I present it. This is how I do things. It only fired one shot. Yeah. Oh, take a listen. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> this bullet hole is the contradiction. W what do you mean, sir? It's elementary. Two shots were fired in this room. The first felled the victim, and the second felled this frame. Hey, that's right! However, this gun was only fired once. Hey, that's true too! Which means that one of these two bullets was fired from a different gun. Did the killer have another gun prepared for tonight? By the way, I noticed something, sir. Yes? What's that thing sticking out from behind the frame? Ah, that. It's a secret safe. A, a secret safe? Oh, I smell money! I'll spare us the trouble and just say it. Nothing like what you're imagining is inside. Now, if you could kindly move this frame out of the way. Roger that! Level two! Level two! Ugh, talk about dusty! I suppose that's what happens when I'm not here to dust it once in a while. I had no idea there was a safe here or I'd have kept it clean for you, sir. So when did you put this thing in? It wasn't something I had installed personally. Every pros prosecutor's office has one. Really? I had no idea! Well, only prosecutors are supposed to have the knowledge of their existence. So, what's inside, Mr. Edgeworth? Right now, nothing. We only use them to store especially important evidence when a trial is in session. That's it? Talk about squashing my hopes and dreams. Secret safe data at jotted down in the organizer. I won't it's rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Okay. I never knew there was a safe hidden back here. Well, if, de if detectives knew about them, they wouldn't be secret now, would they? Are there any other secret hidden things in this room? Even if there were, it would defeat the purpose of them being hidden if I told you. So don't bother looking for them. So, so there's no, like, hidden camera around, right? Hmm? And what if there was? Uh, ah! Uh, no, it's nothing! Forget I said anything! Do I even want to ask what he's been doing in my office while I've been away? Probably dancing around. Like, dancing around, singing. 
Shangri-La! <laughs> no, I was gonna be like, why come from Alabama with a banjo on my me? head? <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Now this is odd. You found something, sir? This keypad. Don't you find it to be a bit too clean? Yeah! There's a thick layer of dust all around it, but not on the keypad itself. You there, the forensic scientist. With a squeaky voice. Oh, uh, yes, sir! Could you please dust this area for fingerprints? You got it, sir! I couldn't find one alone with a single print. Looks like it has been wiped down well. Secret safe data updated. As I thought, it appears that logic is the only way to s around this setback. Time to rationally and calmly play connect the dots with the information we have. Okay. Alright, killer's goal. Why was- what was the killer after? Wiped fingerprints? Another handgun. Well, the handgun could go with the struggle, potentially. Since there was a struggle, then he picks up the handgun? No, he, the one that we found that was fired once probably belonged to the oh, victim. Oh, uh, well, the killer's goal in the wiped fingerprints, probably that means that he would be going to the safe. Probably. I believe I've figured out what the murderer was after. Well, what is it, sir? The fact that the safe was wiped clean of fingerprints suggests that the criminal had at least attempted to open my safe. Making the culprit's motive for breaking and entering theft, I believe. Wow, you're so smart! I wonder if knowing that the motive behind this break-in was theft changes what the other pieces of information can tell me about the crime. There is a- <laughs> Vodgic is cool. Well, but the way that the music and then- the Yeah, the music's work, good. It's, it's cool. There is a possibility that the files splayed on the floor are not the result of a struggle between the victim and his killer. Oh! You mean like it could be from when the killer tried to find something, sir? Precisely. We need to figure out if any of the files have been stolen. Yes, sir! I'm gonna shell files like you've never seen before, even at a library! Um, sure. Let's give that a try. Move it, you butt. <laughs> Why do all the good ones always die young? Sure, we must ponder that every once in a while, Mr. Edgeworth. No matter how much we will lament, the dead will not come back to life. All we can do is search for the truth. And so, what are we supposed to do? How do we go about finding the truth? First, we calmly restore the files to their rightful place. You got it! Here, let me help! Um, so this file goes here, and that book goes there. You sure know a lot about where things go, despite it being Mr. Edgeworth's office. Because I'm the one who keeps it tidy, pal! Okay, done. It would appear that the murder was definitely committed here. Ugh, the blood stains on the shelf are still fresh. I suspect that the victim was killed in a standing position, hence the prints on the shelf. And then the guy fell down onto the floor, right? The blood on the floor is kind of grossing me out. Detective, I don't have the time to deal with your weak stomach right now. Ugh, but you know I'm not good with blood, sir. Why are you in your profession? I'm certain there's something wrong with this picture. The victim's handprints. He must have tried to support himself with his hands after here after being shot. There are prints on the floor, too. Those must have been made when, unable to stay standing, he dropped to the floor. It's still pretty weird. I put them all back, just as they should be, sir. It doesn't it look like anything's missing. Although it does look like the killer moved the body to flip through the shelves. I wonder if they found what they were looking for. There's some extra blood on the white There is indeed. Yeah, yeah. So this is where the bullet lodged itself in after going through the victim, huh? For the bullet to be lodged so squarely in a file spine indicates that the files were ransacked after the shooting had occurred. Then I guess the victim was moved because he was in the killer's way. It appears that the victim was in a sitting position here after being shot. Oh! So that's why the seat of the victim's pants has blood on it! That would be the logical conclusion. 
Uh, also, one other thing I should point out, the last... I've only played this game once before, and it was, like, ten years ago, almost. Mm. Or it so was ten years ago, because this came out in 2009, and I got it, I believe, the first year it came out. Oh. For my birthday. Oh. I want to say. Wow. So, if I might not remember a lot of this stuff. For That's puzzles. fine. The killer moved the body because he was leaning against the bookshelf. The blood on the guy's pants proves that pretty well. How old were you in 2009? To get I'm 23 now, so it's 13 then. Wow, oh, I would not have played this at 13. Although I was playing Fire Emblem way to at 13, so... I don't know. There's some Different... stuff in that. In a sense, I suppose. See? I'm not completely useless, Mr. Edgeworth. Alright, where's the problem? What's the problem? <laughs> Crime scene notes, bullet went clean through the victim's abdomen, the body was found in a ratchet. Why wouldn't the shelves have more blood on them, then? Oh, we can check out our badge now. It's very pristine. The badge's design is said to reflect the relentlessness and discipline of law enforcement. It comes from the authority vested in us as strict protectors of the law. And executors of sentences, much like the harsh winter frosts and blazing summer days. To wear it is to identify oneself as a prosecutor, but I have no interest in doing so. Each prosecutor's badge is engraved with the number of its owner on the back. Hmm. Numbers. As if we're not human on the inside like everyone else. Yeah. Victim's revolver. Only one shot fired. It's Secret safe. Problem. Only one. So, so the thing I'm the surprised problem? about is there should be way more blood if there is uh, things straight through. Is this spot somehow connected to any evidence? There is clearly a contradiction here with this bullet hole. W what do you mean, sir? You don't see? Quite simply, the bullet hole itself is too low. If the victim was shot in the stomach, the hole should be much higher up. Well, right evidence, wrong reason. Always. That's what always but happens for me. But what if the guy was shot while he was sitting or lying down, sir? That would be illogical. The victim leaned against this shelf here after being shot. Which suggests that he was standing when he shot. Then that means... Wait, what does that mean, sir? It means you need to use your brain every once in a while instead of mine, detective. In any case, it means someone made a faulty assumption. And it was from this mistake that our current contradiction was born. What is the faulty assumption that caused the problem with the bullet hole's position? The position of the body, the position of the handprints, the order of the files. It could be the order of the files, maybe. Position of the body, like, it's already been moved. We already know that. Um, the position of the handprints, it's blood. So, order of the files. I believe it's order of the files. If the victim was shot while he was lying down... Wait, didn't you just say that line of reasoning was illogical, sir? You said the victim leaned against the shelf here after being shot. The entire thing goes out. I was trying to be nice and explain my complex logic in an easier way for you, de detective. Oh, really? Thanks for feeding me, sir. Good. I don't want. It. I don't think he noticed my mistake. <laughs> I, I, it should just be like anytime you get something wrong, the entire meter goes, goes out. It. It's just like the biggest blow to Edgeworth. It's like no, no, I was wrong. The p position of the handprints is what's causing the problem. We wouldn't be in this dilemma if the handprints were closer to the ground. But the handprints are where they are, up top. Yes, you were quite perceptive, which is why this is not a viable hypothesis. <laughs> oh, so it's just a what if? Then what's the right answer? You still can't figure it out? Then allow me to explain. Yes, please, sir. Guess he didn't notice the slip-up. Although at this point, I shouldn't be surprised. I believe the order of the files is a bit off. You mean I put them back in the wrong order just now? Hey, actually, I think the labels on the files are wrong, sir. Oh? Yeah! You see here on the how on the files that were shot one began with the number zero? What are those doing all the way down here after 1, 2, and 3? That's really weird. Actually, the way they are organized now is the correct order. They are exactly as I see them in my mind's eye. But the numbers are all out of order. Those white binders are special, so they are arranged a little differently. But from this, we know that the files were not in this order when the crime occurred. Aha, so that's it. I believe the killer made the same incorrect, incorrect assumption as you just did, Detective. Let's rearrange the files in numerical order and see what we find out. 
So do you think it'd be okay to prop up the body back up to where it was before it was moved? They finished processing the crime scene, so I don't see why it wouldn't be. Aww. If you please, Detective Gumshoe. As I suspected, the bullet hole now is where it should logically be. The killer went through my files but first before shooting Mr. Fate. And then put the files back in numerical order, I guess. Oh, wait. Oh, that was not Edgeworth, I don't think. Well, Edgeworth said it. Exactly, and then he proceeded to shoot the victim. He's just talking. <laughs> but why would someone kill a man and then look through your files one more time? Puzzling indeed. The files were thrown into disarray twice, once before and once after the crime, but why? Now the crime scene is as it was at the time of the murder. Time to give it another look. There must be some reason as to why the victim's body was removed. But there is no time to ponder that now. Let us continue our investigation, Detective. Roger that, sir! I'm raring to go! As I suspected, the bullet hole is now where it should logically be. And we figured out that the killer went through your bookshelf twice! Indeed, there are too many fiends the killer did not- they did that don't make sense. What? I was gonna reach the harmonica, but no. Let's- let's just stop the harmonica, I don't think people even liked it. Well, uh, we, we'll we, never know, and also Edgeworth would not be the one who would have the harmonica. If you get a cello, then you can do that. I, I'm not- you think I'm gonna play the cello? Like a fiddle or something. A, a stringed instrument. But to figure out the whys, we need the more information. The piano is not a stringed instrument. I thought it was. I mean, technically it is, but it's like... percussion, too. Th this Wh What is that? Why does it say gumshoe on there in blood? I'd say it's some incredibly incriminating evidence. Yes, indicative of criminal activity, indeed. No, wait, there's gotta be some mistake. Mr. Edgeworth, sir, help me! Say something, sir! It appears that one of my files was stolen. Is that all, sir? What about me and my situation? Is this what the killer was really after? Stolen file data added down in uh, my organizer. Investigation complete! You also, oh, get, you also get a nice refill of your health if when you oh, get to the okay. end. Not necessarily all of it, though. <laughs> Looks like Jim was able to leave us the name of this killer in the end. This most important message managed to reach us! I'm telling you, it wasn't me! You can't be terribly pleased to hear that your beloved partner is the guilty party. Who is the guilty party? Yeah. If you are going to accuse Detective Gumshoe of being the culprit, I sincerely hope you have some proof to bag it up. Jim's words. They're more than enough, wouldn't you say? If that's how you want to play it, then at least allow me to understand your reasoning. You got it! I don't like this one bit. There's something strange about this man's attitude. And there must be some sort of flaw to his logic waiting for me to dig out. Okay. Mr. Edgeworth, what are, you, what are you going to do? What I always do in court, I'm going to cross-examine him. One way or another, I'll expose the flaw in his logic with this technique. Ooh! Uh, how do you do that? C can you explain it to me, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Portsman, if you are ready... Aww! If you don't have time, you could've just said so, sir. We know how this works. Battle Mr. Twist. Portsman's logic. Oh! Detective Gumshoe, you stole Jim's gun from him and shot him dead! Is there like literally no court period? There's no all? court. Oh, it's, so it's just like investigation. Should, with cross like, examinations in it, yeah. And it's just like, oh, so I think bro. you're gonna like this, actually. Yeah, this is very cool. I like how it would have a different background then. Yeah. <laughs> Fervor, you messed up the files to make it look like you had committed theft instead. That's when you moved Jim's body that was sitting in front of the bookshelf! But thanks to that, you didn't notice the bloody letters his body was hiding. And it will be by his final words that you will be brought to justice. Wow. You intend to argue that the victim's dying message points to his killer? I can hear Jim's voice and he's calling for his killer's arrest! Yeah, he is! Arrest Portsman. Yeah. Humph. <laughs> Are you sure you're not mishearing his words, Mr. Portsman? There's no way Detective Gumshoe is the culprit here. Oh, hey now, how old is this dude? 29, same age as the victim. Hmm. Hi, okay. prosecutor. With this prosecutor's office, it's my first time speaking with him. Huh. I will find the flaw in this man's logic and expose it with credible evidence. Or incredible evidence. Rebuttal! Rebuttal! Also, how about that cross-examination music? Yeah, okay. 
How many investigation periods could you have in one? It's not really investigation periods, because it's all just one giant investigation. Right. So it'll be like So this is why it's it's harder to judge the length of the cases in this compared oh, to others. Oh, yeah, so, okay. So I'll say the final case, like, I don't think it's quite as long as Rise from the Ashes, but it's close. Okay. So there's some, there are some long cases in this. You know, there's something I've been meaning to ask. Hmm? What is it? Why do you call the victim Jim when he clearly, his name is Buddy Faith? Isn't it obvious? Jim is the perfect name for my companion. Jacques and Jim. Don't those two names go together like peanut butter and jam? But Jim isn't even close to the guy's real name. Well, Jacques and Buddy just sounds off somehow. Besides, he was the third of a bunch of guys that decided to nickname Jim. This guy's the worst. This guy's so weird. Um, he talks about the victim like he was his pet. For you messed up the files to make it look like you committed theft. This guy's basically Aladdin. <laughs> In terms of voice. Um, ready for a carpet ride? <laughs> On a magic carpet ride. Oh, I was thinking of like, or as Genie likes to say, like that. <laughs> yeah. Do you yeah. really think it was necessary to just hevel my shelves twice to do that? Uh, that's true. Okay then, maybe his real intent was theft. Hey, are you accusing me of stealing something from Mr. Edgeworth? It's a possibility. Maybe your salary's been cut so much that life is getting a little too rough to handle? I'll have you know that I eat three square meals every day, pal! Okay, so all three of them happen to be instant noodles, but... Poor Fane, what an evil prosecutor you were paired up with. And what a motive, no? I mean, he's got a point. Edgeworth is kind of cruel to Gumshoe. You moved your body! I forgot you just get the silhouettes in the bottom screen, like, all the time. Yeah, I was like, huh, are these people gonna be important? Is it gonna be, like, the Furious Five Prosecutors? Like, the Power Rangers, but it's just, like, prosecutors and they're, like, business casual. <laughs> <laughs> and why would Detective Gumshoe do such a thing? Because the body was getting in his way. Uh, he had to mess up your bookshelf somehow, right? Anyway. But thanks to that, you didn't notice the bloody letters his body was hiding. Hold it. Why do you think that the killer didn't notice the bloody letters? The body was covering quite well, wouldn't you say? That's how he missed it. But judging by what I've seen, it doesn't take much for your detective to miss something. Who do you think you are? You know nothing about me, pal! There's a lot a person can understand about another from first impressions alone. I can't say I disagree with him on that point. Why don't you say something, sir? <gasps> not, not you too, Mr. Edgeworth! Despite his lack of attention to detail, I don't believe the detective to be the culprit. Nobody could have overlooked the bloody letters, and I can prove it with evidence. I couldn't ask for a better setup. For the game finishing spike. He, he, he is a gym te teacher. He plays volleyball. <laughs> Maybe in his spare time. Also, that's like the biggest collar for a shirt I've ever seen. <laughs> the Matt on guard had a similar sized one. He did, yeah. Are you saying that those letters were intended for you? Yup! Jim was an outstanding detective. I would expect no less from my former partner. Looks like Mr. Portsman still doesn't understand. He has yet to figure out the true meaning behind the bloody letters. What are you spluttering over there? Can't you just admit my logic is perfectly sound? Actually, there's a gigantic flaw in his logic. A gap so wide that even the good detective can spot it. Now to clue Mr. Portsman in by presenting him with some evidence. Well, we found the blood. Oh, wait, can we check this or is it just like, oh, it's gum juice? It's gum juice. Wait, don't we have evidence of the changed crime scene? Maybe if we just show that, it'll be fine. Objection! Yeah, that, that works, okay. Perhaps you're not aware, Mr. Portsman, but there is a serious flaw in your logic. <laughs> bringing a bit of the courtroom into this, I see. No problem, I'm game. I can't help but find it odd. Excuse me? Odd that a fellow prosecutor would be brought down by the power of his own office. Oh yeah, Edgeworth's objection, Dave. Dave needs to be what are you talking about? Oh, you're joking, I get it. <laughs> if you have the time to laugh, then you have the time to take another closer look at this. Do you still not see... If not, may I direct your attention to the missing file? Wh what? That's impossible! What's impossible, Mr. Portsman? 
Uh, uh, nothing. The files on that shelf are all about a certain case. When the killer went to take the file after murdering your partner, I highly doubt they could have missed the bloody letters written on the spines. It, it's possible that they could have taken the file before committing the murder! I think it's pretty obvious for that the file was stolen after it was written on. The missing letters in the detective's name where, where the files should be is proof. Yeah! I mean, the S is gone and there's only half an H. If Detective Gumshoe really was the culprit of this case, I highly doubt that even he could overlook his own name written in blood on the files. Especially as a detective who can't stand the sight of blood. <gasps> Gasp! <laughs> Which means, uh, what exactly? What does that make this dying message? It makes it the work of criminal intent on tampering with the crime scene. It's so low! I can't believe the criminal tried to pin this whole thing on me, sir! How many times have we had bloody writing as a- Duh! Kim, the victim wrote this. The victim never once for it. No. Especially not the one who got paralyzed mm -hmm. after him falling uh, in the park. Yep, yep, <laughs> that was my favorite. I'm gonna get him, sir. You'll see. I'm gonna have them under arrest in no time. Well, Mr. Portsman? <laughs> Brilliant. Absolutely splendid. Logic deserving of Olympic gold. I appreciate the praise, but it doesn't change the fact that your reasoning is flawed. Meh, you win some and you lose some. That's how life goes. Glad everyone's so cheery, even though I feel more dead than alive. Ah, uh, but, you know, it really is a shame. I really didn't want to have to bring this up, however. What? What is it this time? Are you still after me, pal? Humor me for a second. Who has the key to this office? That would be me. But Mr. Edgeworth just proved that I'm innocent, pal. Whoa. What? That's absolutely right! And I acknowledge your innocence. <laughs> he's wearing a lab coat now. Okay. <laughs> I like this pose of his. It's like he's like in the Hallelujah chorus. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> then why do I sense that you still have something to say? Just what? stop it already. <laughs> stop flogging well, your coat. Well, I was thinking, uh, did you know that there's one other person with a key to this office? One other person? Hey, you there! Yes, sir! Uh, what is it, sir? Uh, would you kindly fetch and escort that lovely young lady here for me? A lady? Is it old bag? The girl's a member of the building's security. Uh, think of her as a material witness. S security Did you say security? No, stop it, pal! Don't! What's wrong with him all of a sudden? I believe she needs no introduction. I have called upon Miss Maggie Bird, a member Wait, of security. Come on! I am sick of seeing Maggie freaking Bird! <laughs> Would you have preferred Awana? <laughs> Maybe! I have seen this girl way too much! Oh, and you have to give her a different voice now. So because old. you always get a different uh, voice for Maggie. Detective Gumshoe, sir. Maggie! Miss Bird is the security guard on watch tonight. She better not be main character. I see. And your point is? My point is that she could very well have used it. And by it, I mean the master key which can open all the office doors in this building. What? what? Yeah, you saw how slowly that text dropped. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not the guilty party, Detective Gumshoe, then the only other person with access to this room is Miss Bird. <laughs> what makes you think the guilty party isn't this person? Whoa. How dare you? I would never sneak into someone's room. That's right. I refuse to believe that Maggie's the culprit, pal. Um, it was me! That's right, I did it! Can we take that as a confession, Detective? Um, well, it wasn't really me, but it definitely wasn't Maggie, pal. How old is Maggie now? So yeah, it was me. If it was you, you'd have no problems with that, right? Maggie uh, Maggie's looks old now. 23, she's my age. Never mind, she's pretty young. She just has different hair now. Um, she's just not wearing, like, the, the waitress's hat or the policeman's hat. I really? Think that, I think it's literally the same. Less hair? I don't know. I like her look though in this. She's got the cool, the cool shirt yeah, on. Yeah, she does. <laughs> Please refrain from flying off the handle, Detective. There's no need for such theatrics. Listen to your boss, Detective. He understands what I'm saying here. <laughs> I forgot how weird this guy is. That girl's the only one who could have committed the crime, and for one simple reason. 
<laughs> and now you glare down at the person giving the testimony instead oh, of the nice. opposing side. Reason for suspicion. I thought it was reason you suck. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty obvious that Miss Bird snuck into your room using the master key. I mean, if Detective Gumshoe isn't the one who opened the door, then that leaves only Miss Bird as our prime suspect. On top of which, she knows our good detective, doesn't she? Making it all more probable that she is the one who faked the dying message. <laughs> I love this pose. I love that pose. Oh, <laughs> it's like, um, not, uh, no, it is a touchdown Jesus. It's like touchdown Jesus. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, there was like, um, a statue. Yeah, most don't know this. Okay, there's a statue in the United States. Is it in, what state is it in? Ohio. Oh, it's in Ohio? I think it's in Ohio. It's in one of the states connecting our... Okay, it's, it's between... It's where between we... Michigan and Florida. It, yeah. Which I know there was real down, but it's, mm -hmm. it's in that area. Ohio there, or so there was, Kentucky. there's like a large... I think it would be like Kentucky because that's more like Christian. It's near. It's near the I mean, border because I remember you'd see Touchdown Jesus and you'd be like, "Yep, we're so Touchdown there. Jesus." It's a giant statue of Jesus and like his arms were raised really high in the air, so it looked like he was like calling like Touchdown. And then like I, I don't it know, burnt. it burned, and then they yeah. rebuilt it. And but like I guess they didn't want Touchdown Jesus again, so, so they he had, had his, like, arms his arms outstretched. Out, so like, it looks come like to Come to Jesus. Jesus, yeah. I mean, Come to Jesus is more appropriate, but Touchdown Jesus is funnier. It's better. So you're saying she used the master key? Master key data jotted down in the organizer. Incredibly incriminating evidence, wouldn't you say? You're making no. him sing every time? No, I, I feel like there should be something weird. Incredibly incriminating evidence, wouldn't you say? Maggie freaking bird. She's the only girl in this case. Okay, you know what? As long as she doesn't appear again, fine. <laughs> this might be her last appearance. That's fine. Bye-bye, Maggie Bird. That's what you claimed about the evidence earlier as well. That was then. This is now. The flow of a good match always changes during a rally. It's all about your reflexes and reaction time, especially for an athlete like Oh, he's me. a tennis player, dude. Oh, is that it? Yeah, he's wearing, I just realized, he's wearing the band around it. His I head. thought it was volleyball, because he mentioned spiking. Yeah, you spike a tennis ball as well. Oh, is that like the equivalent of Koopa like barely hitting it in power tennis? No! It's like stupid Koopa! You stupid Koopa! That's, it's kind of like a spike, I guess. I don't know. Or I is that like the lob shots? Or is it never hit a lob shot to Bowser? Yup, never hit a lob shot to Bowser or Petey Piranha. Never face pro Bowser. He'll kick your butt. Yeah, never. Wow. One day we will actually play that. Maybe we could play it with Link. Maybe. <laughs> and pro Bowser. Yeah. It'll be like like Mario Power Tennis Multiplayer featuring Marty, Link the Hero 64, and pro, pro Bowser. Bowser. Yep. I wonder if there was anyone else other than Miss Bird who could have used the master key. The fact that he knew this seems to think that he might have stolen it. It seems that the only way to get Mr. Portsman to give me more details is to press him. That's fine. Which we've done. You don't Reason need to reread suck. everything aloud. But that's all the time we have for today. Are you kidding me? I'm trying to keep him at a half hour. We aren't even done with the first case yet. I don't... Okay, like I said, it's been ten years since I played this. I don't remember where all the to be continues are. Mm. Especially because it's not divided up into courts and investigations. Yeah, okay. So, if we might... If we have, a, like, an episode where... Or, like, several where it's like, to, to be continued. Okay. And, like, in the middle, that's fine. Thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next time. We're gonna... Bring down tennis player pro Bowser justice. Portsman a Hallelujah touchdown Jesus. Okay. That's, his, that's his name. Tune in then. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless.